What happened to this crab? What was the strange force that sucked it in like it was no biggie? People call this thing a pressure difference or delta P. If you think that this stuff can only happen to professional divers, you may be surprised that it can be dangerous even to people who go for a swim in regular pools. The pressure difference can be explained simply by this. Imagine two bodies of water connected with a small pipe. These two bodies of water would be trying to equalize the pressure, creating a suction which powers depends on the amount of water and depth and how big is the hole which separates these two bodies of water. So imagine a diver working near a plugged hole, for example near the water dam, imagine him clearing a hole which is not entirely closed. A sudden increase of pressure would pull him and cover the hole completely with his own body creating a perfect seal. This happened to a Luke Seabrook who was working in Nova Scotia Power Annapolis Tidal Power Plant. As a commercial diver his job was to inspect and fix things that are underwater and that is quite dangerous. When he went down near the Tidal Power Plant dam, he was inspecting the gates controlling the flow of the powerful tides of the Annapolis River. Just one minute in he was shouting to the team above him to pull him up, but quickly he went silent. And no other diver could have helped him because they would also get trapped underwater. You could be 10 meters away from your dive buddy and see him seemingly stuck in one place. But if you dared to come closer, you could feel water flow increasing exponentially, sucking you harder and harder. Only when tide calmed down and pressure equalized, they could retrieve this Luke's body. One Navy diver, Steve Donovan, himself almost got stuck in the 1990s Bedford Basin. He said that you really can't see water flow towards these holes. During operation where they were salvaging a sunken tug boat, the water in the hull was being sucked out, so that the sunken boat could rise to the surface. Such technique also created a pressure difference. Steve was smart guy, and when he was diving, he was carrying a carton of milk. Milk, unlike water, is pretty visible, and when he released some of it, he could see where the water flow was occurring. He noticed a small, about a fist-sized hole in a sunken vessel. This hole was way too close and immediately sucked the milk carton and his glove inside the hull. According to him, his arm was almost grabbed by the hundreds of pounds of pressure. The reason why I dived right into the subject was that I have read quite a few horrifying stories and was pulled deeper and deeper into the abyss of information. Not only divers are prone to Delta P. I was also reading about people being trapped in pools which eventually get them dead. I read a story about a girl named Abigail Taylor which literally gave me goosebumps. Apparently this six year old girl went into a children's pool at the Minneapolis Golf Club. Little did anyone knew is that pool managers were greedy bastards and wanted to save money. So they used some old broken frame and fixed a pool drain cover in place with cheap metal screws, which eventually rusted and uncovered the damned drain. The poor girl got her bottom part stuck to this hole and her 6 meters or 20 feet of small intestines were sucked into the pool system. Absolutely horrifying. The greedy management managed to save couple hundreds bucks but what at a huge cost. The suction even small pools is so great that even a grown man probably couldn't save anyone. The only way to stop this would be to turn off pool pumps. Another incident happened when five divers were pulled into an oil pipe. In 2022 these guys were doing a routine maintenance work in Pointe a Pierre, a town in western of Trinidad on the Gulf of Pierre and the site of the island's biggest oil refinery. Divers were working in a depth of 18 meters or 60 feet. To make it easier, they were inside a special diving bell which surrounded the oil pipe ending. By the way, this U-shaped pipe is used by all tankers to unload their cargo. Anyway, the guys were in the bell which was submerged in the water. To compensate pressure and stop water filling up to the bell's ceiling, pressurized air was pumped inside the working area to counter the pressure of the water. The only thing that separated them from low pressure inside the pipe and high pressure in the bell 
was a plug which once opened unexpectedly sucked everyone inside the pipe. There is actually a GoPro footage when this stuff happened. They got sucked in so quickly that light seemingly vanished in the blink of an eye as these men were pulled inside with immense force. They were tumbling towards the deeper end of the oil pipe. This pipe was not full with oil since as it is only used to transfer oil to the refinery when the oil tanker is unloading. However, there still was some oil left which burned the eyes, mouth and nose of the divers. Luckily there were some air pockets in this pipe and the guy closest to the exit, Christopher Budram, was able to crawl through all of this. He also found an air tank and managed to reach the end of the pipe where he banged the metal walls to be heard and rescued. Sadly, he was the only survivor since companies responsible for them failed to get them help. For more extreme difference in pressure I would like to cover the infamous Bifor Dolphin incident where the situation is no longer called the difference of pressure but rather uncontrolled decompression. It happened in 1983 while working at the drilling platform in the North Sea. Deep sea divers are often surrounded by great pressure and their bodies are absolutely saturated with gases. If they were to surface normally, they would 100% die because gas bubbles that are trapped in their tissues would expand. One way to decompress divers is for them to decompress or release gas very slowly. So they live in a cramped diving chamber for up to 28 days. These chambers are very pressurized and their pressure during these depressurizing days are slowly lowered. Anyway, in Byford Dolphin, four divers were living in diving chambers which were pressurized to 9 atmospheres, since this man worked in the depths of 90 meters or 300 feet. While the two divers were chilling in diving chamber number 2, other two divers did their mission at the bottom of the sea floor. Then they climbed the bell, locked the doors, were pulled up to the surface and got their bell connected to the diving chamber. Tired but probably happy after grueling work, they entered the chamber. But before one diver was able to close the door behind him, for some unknown reason, the diver which was outside the diving chamber opened the diving bell's door. I presume they were able to do that even if they were outside the bell. So immediately 9 atmospheres of pressure rushed outside in order to equalize. You can imagine the whole situation as a very inflated tire and someone stabbing it with a knife. What would happen, right? The force ripped and propelled the diving bell which struck two divers that were outside, killing one and injuring another. Now for the people who were inside, the things were uh, a little bit rougher. Truls Helvig, a diver which was inside the chamber one and who was also closest to slightly open door, well, the force of nine atmospheres ripped him apart and sucked all of the internal organs of his chest and abdomen, except the trachea and section of small intestine and the uh, middle section of the spine. Apparently it all happened in under 0.1 second. Other divers were not killed as violently as Truls Helvig since they were further away from the hole, but they were still in a bad shape since their bodies were saturated with gases and they were filled with internal bleeding and also they were dead. Their veins and cardiac chambers were filled with fat mixed with gases that according to investigators looked like sizzling butter on a frying pan. Way to ruin butter forever. There are actually photos online of the bodies but I seriously discourage you from looking at them. Not the worst I have seen but still pretty bad. The whole situation happened because of human error and faulty equipment which was old and it was made in 1975. The lack of similar incidents means that new safety standards were implemented and work quite good besides this thing. So what have we learned in this video? Don't go close to pool drains, especially if they are uncovered, that will probably end you for sure. Then don't be a commercial diver, although the pay is pretty good. 
Some reportedly make over $1,500 per day, but the risks are very high and you have to talk in chimpmunk voices for weeks.